Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Dow Jones Utility monthly chart crossed over the silver spot US dollar chart. And the reason why I'm pulling this chart up is because we had, uh, I think it was a non farm payroll number that was reported. The industrials didn't go to a new all time high, but they're above 18,000. The stock markets are rallying. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on as far as um, psyops related to race war and to be honest I really have stopped analyzing a lot of the hoaxes and uh, propaganda that the media puts out and the events because uh, it's it's getting to the point now for me that it's just really a bunch of noise uh, the reason I say that is because we just have to look at the charts. We can't trust what the news reports anymore. Now, it's very clear to me that the powers that be, and you can endlessly debate who they are. I personally believe that it's the Jesuits who are behind everything. Of course, Satan is behind them, but uh, are trying to desperately create some type of uh, race war or anti-police sentiment uh, leading into these conventions that we're going to have. In fact, just as an anecdotal story, I was at the gym today with my trainer and I was going through some stuff and, and a young guy walked up, really good looking young guy in good shape. And I just kind of overheard my trainer talking to him. He's a cop, uh, a local cop, and they were kind of discussing some of the events that happened today in the last few days and I noticed a really uh, very agitated look on his face when I began to approach them and the only thing I could get from that was that he was very interested in what my reaction would be whether I was you know somebody who really comes down on the police for being mo monsters and I made it clear from my comments that uh, I fully support the police, and I think that uh, I made a couple of comments that implied that it was kind of uh, strange that uh, all these incidents start happening right after Hillary is uh, set free. And uh, he kind of looked at me and said, yeah, that's kind of a coincidence. But the thing that really stood out for me was that this cop was really concerned about the fact that someone would know he's a cop. I mean, uh, that's a scary thing that somebody who is a police officer who really, for the most part, the ones that I've met are just ordinary guys who are trying to support their families and want to go home alive every night. Now, I know the stories. I know the police brutality and all that stuff. Um, I don't know how much of that stuff is real. I don't know how much of these numbers are real as far as what we're seeing for these economic numbers. There's just no way to know. The, re the only thing you can really look at is the charts. So back to the charts, these are the facts. The, the, these are the facts of what the prices are. Now, I'm not even going to bother to interpret the prices in terms of the news because the news is fake, but just look at the raw price data. And you can see here that when we look at the data that the utilities are absolutely blasting off in the new highs. Now, the Dow is forming up a uh, type of pennant or more like a cup and saucer formation looking to go to new highs. I'll look at that in a second here. But what I wanted to point out is the comparison between this interest rate sensitive utilities index and the price of silver. Now, where are we? historically on this chart. It's really hard to make a comparison because where we are right now is the utility index breaking into new highs and silver starting to rise. We don't really have a precedent for that. We kind of have a precedent in here. This would probably be the closest thing to what we're looking at right now. And you have to understand that percentages uh, when, when you're talking about prices and you're looking at percentages, if you're looking back in the past, 
I could probably move this back in the past and show you that when this event occurred, there was actually a big, big difference in these prices with this low here in silver and, and stocks rising. When we look on the chart now, it appears to be you know, just a very small thing, but that's because of this big difference that we have here. So if we're looking at a mirror image of what we saw here with uh, the utilities starting this massive rise and a money printing thing going on, um, well, what's the price projection? Uh, that's it's hard to say but I would have to say looking at this chart uh, if silver actually catches up to the price of the utilities and and moves to twice what the utilities or even more than twice a huge move um, that's over a hundred dollar silver right there if this sort of pattern repeats will it repeat I have no idea there's just so much going on we're going to, into these elections so I can't say but it's an interesting chart now let's get over to the main topic of the night and that's going to be these bottlenecks and this is one on silver doctors now I know the criticism of silver doctors in fact one thing that I will say about silver doctors is that he does allow his members or just anybody who signed up to make comments and he's featured some people that are kind of, we'll say, sensational, whether it's Bold Pony or others. And one of the things that we see in this space is people making extraordinary claims and something's about to happen tomorrow and everything's going to blow up tomorrow and, and there's a huge crisis coming. And so uh, that's something you kind of have to turn the volume down on and just simply recognize that people who are in this space who are trying to make a living and I have great respect for Silver Doctors because he was someone who was doing a blog like I was doing and then he he had the uh, financial acumen or whatever it is that it takes to also become a dealer in silver and I think he's a, a, either a retired doctor or he, he's a doctor and he went in with other doctors to create this business but he's done a tremendous job uh, in in what he's done and uh, decided to sell silver now whatever the reason is maybe it's just because having uh, sort of hyped stories sells more silver uh, I don't know but uh, you know I've participated in the hype one time I think I predicted hundred dollar silver by the end of the year one year of course I was wrong so that was kind of my last uh, attempt at making predictions. But uh, let's read this story here. This is about Sweden's largest gold dealer, gold and silver dealer, and their bank accounts were closed. Now, if you go into the comments, you can see people poo-pooing this and saying, well, no, it, it it's more a specific thing. But uh, when we think about these in, in just a big, broad, general view, these bottlenecks, and we're going to look at about AG and some of the other bottlenecks. Um, I believe, I honestly believe, there's something behind the scenes going on. So let's read this and then I'll, I'll comment. Uh, it's Sweden's largest gold and silver dealers, bank accounts closed, shut out of banking system. With European capital scrambling into gold following Brexit, the cartel just played their hand. The plan this time is not door-to-door -door confiscation, but simply to shut down the best gold and silver dealers the moment the public begins to wake up. The cartel have tipped their hand. The plan is, to is not to come after your silver and gold. Case in point, Sweden's largest gold and silver dealer, Tavax Gold and Valuta, whose bank accounts were suddenly closed Thursday without notice by Swedish bank SEB due to a general business decision. Notice posted on Tavex Gold and Voluta's website that as of 15.30 on June 30th, 2016, they can no longer accept bank deposits or transfers as SEB has shut down their accounts without notice, leaving the PM firm scrambling to set up alternate payment systems. Warning of change in Tavex AB AB's payment best customer we hereby announce that as of 1530 Thursday June 30th 2016 we can no longer accept bank transfers or bank deposits for gold and silver to our Swedish SEB account 
The reason for this is that SEB at very short notice informed us that they will close down our bank account. This decision has unfortunately been made without first consulting us and in addition to state, and it's not, you got to remember this is a translation from the Swedish, so some of the English isn't correct. In addition to state and its notification later that, that the decision to close our account due to a general business decisions, they have not yet given us any concrete reason why they decided to take this measure. The banking system in Sweden is operated, however, vigorously towards a cashless society. As you probably are aware, and Tavex has as one of the largest wholesale suppliers of physical notes and investment metals in Sweden, as we see it become a target for major commercial banks. With that said, we are working frantically to set up a new payment system that we believe will be operational with two within two to three weeks. Now, I would say maybe you ought to set up a Bitcoin payment system. Just, just a suggestion. The strategy makes perfect sense from the cartel's point of view. While stackers worry about a gold and silver confiscation event, the concern for the elite in today's financial world is not the 0.1%, that's right, 0.1% that own precious metals. Now, that's a very important number. Now, I don't know what the breakdown is on this number of the 0.1% that own precious metals, but I would venture to guess that a significant percentage of that 0.1% own promises of precious metals. That 0.1% is not physical ownership of precious metals, but it is actually some type of ETF holding uh, LLC uh, pooled accounts, some type of account the number's probably actually 0.01% of the world that owns precious metals, is keeping physical gold and silver out of the hands of the gradually awaking masses, particularly when they're suddenly awakened by an event like Brexit or bail-ins. In fact, the plan has already been tested and implemented in the U.S. and is simply lying dormant, awaiting the go signal under the program Operation Choke Point. If you haven't acquired your financial insurance before the financial crisis hits, don't expect the elite to allow you to cry the, uh, acquire them when the bleep hits the fan. So that's the story. Now, is this story about that particular broker? It could be. Or is it a story about the system in general and how they're trying to force people into... Um, a cashless system and they're trying to basically plug the holes in the dike of their system that allows people to escape from the system. Now I want to take you over to About AG's page. This is a, a, a great site and this guy, I don't know who he is, but he definitely stays on top of these bankruptcies and what's very interesting about these bankruptcies is they kind of make a little flare up they're never reported in the mainstream media they're really never even reported in the alternative media but you can see here that uh, for example if we look at northwest territorial mints bankruptcy uh, you can see the latest edition is june 30th so this is not uh, some ancient story. This is an ongoing concern. Uh, we can look at the uh, story about Bullion Direct. Um, the Bullion Direct, uh, the latest entry here is June 22nd. And uh, then, of course, we have Tolving. I've covered that before. And uh, the latest entry here is June 28th. So we've got these Chapter 7 bankruptcy auction I don't have time to dig into the specifics of any of these but but when you add them all together of course then there's Kitco here and I expect there's probably going to be a lot more so how does this uh, what does this have to do with the story that we've gotten out of Sweden well I'm going to suggest that we're talking about a bottleneck that is being implemented it's not being implemented openly. It's kind of not even being implemented surreptitiously. But if you just look at the numbers and kind of think about, um, I would say, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, 
why is it that we have these businesses that uh, what they're doing is really a fairly straightforward thing. Now, Northwest Territorial Mint was one that I watched fairly carefully because they had they actually were a company that had uh, rounds that they made uh, that were with their own stamp and they were very, very close to the spot price. And I had looked at them a number of times, but whenever I investigated them, I found a large number of complaints on the Better Business Bureau. And I'd also looked at Bullion Direct and I've actually purchased things from Tolving before. But uh, but the other two I avoided and that was because of the some of the comments and people making complaints. And so one of the things that you see when you have a concern that's probably going to go into bankruptcy or at least into a financial crisis is a long delivery delay. Now, Northwest Territorial Mint was absolutely, uh, they were the number one that you would hear anybody talk about as far as delays. We're talking about six month delays, seventh month, seven month delays. And of course, the larger the window of delay for delivery is a pretty good indication that you might be looking at a potential bankruptcy because we know that with a Ponzi scheme, um, a straight Ponzi scheme, you're just simply taking one group of investors money and paying it back to another group. Uh, with Bullion Direct, I think this, the issue was stored metal and the metal wasn't really stored. And uh, so you have a warning sign that you can see in delivery delays and that's why I'm very careful to watch any reports from members or from people outside who talk about getting delays from Provident or Gainesville or Atmex or any of the ones that, that I buy from because those are going to be early indicators that you have to watch that something's wrong. But the big question is this, why are we seeing this? Now, if you think about other businesses, there, there are some other businesses that you can think of. For example, businesses that are involved in new technologies uh, or, in my opinion, fake and phony or worthless technologies like I think the best example I could think of would be Elon Musk and the numerous scams that he's run. And if you want to see my exposés on him, you can go to my NASA Moon Hoax, uh, nasamoonhoax.com site. But, uh, you know, when you... When you see these types of thing where there's something suspicious going on, kind of shady and there's where there's smoke, there's fire, uh, you have to wonder what's behind this. Uh, as far as what types of businesses have these sorts of issues, you don't really see these sorts of issues with most business concerns. Why is it that we see these bottlenecks in precious metals? Uh, and not only do we see bottlenecks and bankruptcies, but we see a lack of reporting of these bottlenecks and bankruptcies. So my gut instinct is going to tell me that this is not just a Silver Doctor's hype story. Something really is going on behind the scenes. I think the number of people who own physical precious metals is probably a lot closer to point. 0.01% than this 0.1%. And if that's the case, then it's very clear that they have to create bottlenecks. There is absolutely no way that the powers that be who are, again, printing money hand over fist to try to keep their system from collapsing. There's absolutely no way that they can allow even a fraction of a percent of the money that they're printing to actually flow into real physical precious metals. And so whether through agents who are intended to fail from the beginning or whether they're legitimate business interests who are pressured and forced into bankruptcy or whether it is something that is uh, surprised on them that comes from the outside, whatever the reason is, there is a very, very strange number of mysterious slowdowns, bankruptcies, bottlenecks in this community that you don't see anywhere else. And that tells me that where there's smoke, there's fire.
and we'll talk to you next time.